Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Morphe Auction House taking a look at a piece of luggage that they are going to be selling in their upcoming April of 2019 firearms auction. This is not just any piece of luggage, naturally. This is a piece of luggage that has a 9mm Ingram M10 submachine gun sitting in it. This is one of Military Armament Corporation's operator's briefcases. So we previously had a video where I got a chance to actually do some shooting with one of H&K's operational briefcases, and to me it is pretty much downright fascinating to compare the work of HK with the work of Mac. Uh, <laughs> there are some significant differences. Let me show you. Alright, let's do this by going through some pros and cons of uh, Mac versus HK. So we'll start with a, uh, a point for Mac. In this briefcase you can actually mount the gun with a suppressor attached. If you're the sort of person who is actually wandering around with a submachine gun in a briefcase, you're probably the sort of person who would prefer to have it be a quiet submachine gun in a briefcase. So that's a nice addition. Uh, no points for HK. Their gun is bigger and does not fit in their case with a suppressor. Uh, point number two, stability. Uh, and this is a point for HK. The HK briefcase has a, uh, a claw mount built into the structure of the briefcase that holds the gun nice and securely in place. Mac has a piece of Velcro. That's a little unfair. They also have some wooden blocks covered in felt. Uh, and this gun is actually very, very stable inside the briefcase here, uh, because it has actually pretty well wedged in with the, the muzzle end of the suppressor, as well as these contoured blocks. And it's scary to think about, but it's not actually going anywhere. Uh, next up, how about storage? Got a point here for uh, Mac once again. You'll notice we have a little Velcro thing here that holds the stock for your gun. Uh, so if you need to get the gun out, you can also put the stock on it. They also have storage for two additional magazines uh, in the briefcase. Uh, HK offers you storage for one magazine plus a cleaning kit. How about trigger? Three or four or maybe a hundred points here to HK, because they have a trigger in the handle of the briefcase, and they have a safety switch on it. Mac has this lever that uh, pushes up against the trigger here. Uh, there is no safety, and the firing end of that thing just sticks out through an open slot in the bottom of the briefcase. To fire the gun, you do that. I go ahead and cock the thing here. I have now cocked it. Boom! So um, this thing sticks out the bottom of the suitcase all the time. Uh, this is basically like walking around with a gun that is loaded, chambered. Uh, safety is disengaged, and the trigger is just hanging out here waiting to accidentally snag on something. How about brass management? We'll give a point here to Mac for having this uh, little folded metal uh, like ejection sheet plate thing. Uh, attached onto the, the opening side of the suitcase with the ejection port facing up. H and K mounts their gun pointing the opposite direction so that the ejection port is facing the fixed side of the briefcase. As for covertness of shooting, we're pretty much tied there, because they both allow you to put a business card over the, uh, the dangerous end of the briefcase. A couple quick things I want to point out before we wrap this up. First off, the suppressor on this gun is abnormally short. This is a proper M10 9mm suppressor, and you can see that it's quite a bit longer. In fact, this is far too long to actually fit in the briefcase. Mac, and also RPB after them, uh, made a special short uh, suppressor can here by taking the second stage of the tube and cutting it down so it was short enough to fit inside the briefcase. They indicated this on the serial number by adding a K for Kurtz, or short, uh, for these specific briefcase style suppressors. 
And they actually originally designed this for the M11 in 380, which will fit in the briefcase with its proper regular suppressor on it. So uh, the adaptation to use the, the larger 9mm or 45 caliber guns, uh, every, all the dimensions on these are identical between 9 and 45. So as long as you have a short 45 suppressor, or theoretically no suppressor, although the gun's much more stable in the case when you have the suppressor locking into that hole. Um, anyway, you can fit a 9 or 45 in this model of the briefcase. A uh, couple interesting little anecdotes. Uh, I spoke to someone who was involved in some of the early testing of these, and they mentioned a slightly terrifying incident when uh, one of the engineers <laughs> at, uh, at Mac got the brilliant idea to make a remote controlled one of these by adding a little solenoid switch and a garage door opener to the trigger mechanism. And uh, he was all giddy with excitement and brought it out to the range the first time. This was with the 380 gun. And they went ahead and loaded it, and uh, cocked it, set up the trigger, made it all ready, set it up on the, the shooting bench at the range, and uh, stepped back behind it and pushed, boop, pushed the uh, garage door opener button, and the like first two shots, the recoil caused the briefcase to fall over onto its side like this, and then because it is substantially off-center, caused it to begin to spin in a circle. Um, uh, one of those things where you can't move quickly enough to get away from it, but your mind is watching it in slow motion as this bullet spewing briefcase slowly, or actually very rapidly, turns towards you. And uh, apparently, fortunately, it ran out of ammunition just shy of uh, pointing at any of the guys who were lined up behind it watching this experiment. Uh, Keep in mind, the Max all have very high rates of fire, so this guy's going to shoot at probably about a thousand rounds per minute. The 380s are faster than that at mm, 1500 or so. So uh, this thing expends its ammo extremely fast, which really kind of makes one question exactly what uses you could legitimately have with a, a device like this. And same for the HK briefcase. The other interesting little anecdote was uh, with John Wayne. Uh, John Wayne was potentially interested in being an investor in a gun company, and showed some interest in Mac. Uh, in fact, he was in... he starred with an M10 submachine gun in McHugh in 1974, which was uh, an early publicity opportunity for the gun. Anyway, he came out to uh, Mitch Werbel's farm, where they were doing some, some testing and demo of these briefcases. And uh, the guy doing the shooting very nearly started the demonstration with the gun pointed backwards, because uh, they kind of look... both ends kind of look the same. And he very very nearly started shooting with the briefcase pointing directly backwards at John Wayne and everybody else who was watching. And fortunately, apparently recognized his error, or someone pointed it out to him, uh, before he started shooting, and uh, turned around and did in fact put the rounds downrange. Uh, John Wayne, <laughs> especially after becoming aware of this incident, opted not to invest in Military Arms Corporation. But they didn't make a whole lot of these, uh, probably for somewhat obvious reasons, but they sure are a cool accessory today. Um, vaguely terrifying, but also extremely cool. So, if you've been looking for one of these, or even if you haven't been and suddenly discovered something that you cannot live without, this is of course coming up for sale here at Morphe's. Um, and it is both the briefcase and the gun, and the suppressor. So uh, buying this involves getting two separate NFA tax stamps, one for the suppressor, one for the submachine gun. Uh, however, it is a fully transferable submachine gun, and uh, that opportunity is open to anybody who would like to go through the process and spend the money. So if you take a look at the description text below, you'll find a link to the uh, to ForgottenWeapons.com, and from there you can click over to Morphe's catalog page for this lot. Take a look at all of their photos, their description, uh, their price estimate, and everything else you might want to know about it. Thanks for watching.